Now that you've got your new sea legs, you're part of a world-class team. Just, Just like, like us. So let's get you up to speed with the basic moves and procedures so that you and your sea legs can perform at their best. Just like, Just us. like us. Catch the ball, man. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, where'd that come from? <laughs> I bet you're keen to launch your sea legs, but there's still a few simple things you need to know. In the All Blacks, we like to bring in experts to help with the coaching. So who better to help you out with some operational tips than the guys who made your boat? Introducing the master, David from Sea Legs. Thanks, Ali. Congratulations, team, on your recent successes. Real proud of you. And congratulations to you, too for purchasing your Sea Legs Amphibious boat. I'm looking forward to taking you through how to make it work. I've just given this to the boys. It's a very important document that goes, it's called the Owner's Manual, and that outlines how you should use your boat. Are you going to my strong point, mate, so... Um, mm, you're more of a talker. Let's just do it the Kiwi way, eh? Mm. Okay. Go on here, I'll go with you. Assuming you have read your Owner's Manual and have had a Coast Guard course, you can get into a new amphibious craft, and the first thing you look for is look around the boat. The first thing you're going to check for, Victor, is the bung. The bung. Pretty important to have the bung in the back of the boat, that's step one. Step number two is to have a look at your tubes. The tubes should be inflated to roughly 3 psi, which is, should be able to push down like that. If your tubes aren't about 3 psi, don't go out because you'll damage your tubes. Tico, your tube at 3 psi, my old mate? Yeah, looking pretty solid, mate. Nice. Awesome. Next thing you do, fuel and oil. Make sure you're fueled up, oiled up, ready to go. There's a fire extinguisher in the front seat there. Make sure that's uh, current and also ready to go in the unlikely event you have a fire on board. Once you've done all those things, basic rule is life jackets. Must have life jackets for everybody going on the boat. And a little rule that I was taught by my dad is nothing bad happens going slowly. So take your time and it'll go well. So how long can my sea legs run on land? Good question, Victor. In short, we've got two systems, one XRT and one non-XRT system. The non-XRT system runs for 10 minutes every hour. The XRT system runs for up to half an hour for every hour. And how fast does this little beauty go on, land? Not as fast as you, Ali. But uh, again, a two-phase answer. In two-wheel drive mode, for those people who have two-wheel drive boats, it'll run up to 10 kilometres an hour. And those people driving their boats in three-wheel drive mode, because the power is spread against three wheels, we'll get about six or seven kilometres an hour. Okay, well, with the uh, fuel gauge and how far can my Sealix go on a single tank? You're really on a roll with the good questions. Fuel gauge is up here and is normally part of your, uh, your outboard gauges. The uh, size of your tank depends on the boat that you've got. So uh, the 7.7 .7 range have about a 180 litre tank, which will give you four to six hours roughly of driving, depending on how fast you drive. The 6.1 metres have an 80 litre tank, which is uh, the tank under the floor. That'll give you two to four hours of running. Hey, does, uh, does sea legs run on normal petrol and oil? It sure does. You don't have to mix the oil. It uses uh, 95 octane petrol. And uh, the boat's uh, modern day two strokes, so you put uh, two stroke oil in the back of the boat to mix for the outboard. So, uh, where does the uh, outboard oil go, and how much do you add? Right, well, the, uh, the oil alarm will go off on the boat when it needs some. You add your oil right here on a 7.7. .7. And you'll find that it's the same on those six and seven metre boats, it's at the rear of the boat. So you just undo that, they come in little four litre packs, put the four litres in, and you're on your way. Hey, nice. David, can you um, change the tyre pressure, and why would you need to? Sometimes the boats get stuck. You might find you've driven up a, uh, a strange bank that you're not used to, that's a bit sandy, a bit muddy, and uh, you've got your wheels well stuck. And the best thing you can do is jump out of the boat and let the uh, tyre pressure out. You let it down to about five psi, where the uh, wall of the tyre just starts to break, you'll get a lot more traction out of the wheel and you'll probably be able to drive out of where you've just come from. Can and I also tow my fish up the hill? You can if you want to. Oh, yeah. Well, much like a car, you turn the key on. But unlike a car, you leave it for about 30 seconds. And what it's doing right now, it's blowing all the petrol fumes that are in the bottom of the boat out, just in case there's a spark or something when we ignite the motor. 
Up here's your throttle control. And that just means power. The difference between this and the joystick is this is power and this is speed. So you should have lots of power all the time because you only use this one to adjust your speed. Now let's put the wheels down. I hold the button down so I hear the buzzer beep. The alarm tells me that they're fully in and locked. That's the bell. Next thing we do is the bow wheel. Follow the same process, bow wheel down. And now we're ready to roll. We just drive straight into the water. Once our prop's in the water, we start the outboard. Start the bow wheel coming up as soon as we can. And as soon as the prop can turn, you get the prop turning. Once my bow wheel's up, I bring my stern wheels up. And once they're up, I do a visual check, switch off the inboard motor. And now, we're in boat mode, ready to go on great adventures. It looks pretty simple, doesn't it? I mean, just a few little minor pits that you need to remember, and we're now a boat, not a car. That's right. A few things to remember when you're out in the water is you've got to keep your weight centred across the whole boat. Amphibious boats tend to carry a bit of weight in the stern because you're carrying an extra engine. So you've got your outboard engine and another engine, which is your inboard engine. So that extra weight's all sitting down the back. So the more weight you can get up the front, the more balanced your boat will be once you get into going along on the water. Cool. All right, we're out in the water. Any other questions? Uh, I didn't really see when you came out, so I'm just wondering what wheels come up first. Right, that's a good question. When you're driving into the water, you get your bow wheel up first. That reduces the drag immediately and keeps the stern wheels pushing you along with the prop. Now, as soon as you feel the stern wheels lose traction, get those up too and propel her away. And it works exactly the reverse when you're going into shore. That's pretty similar to me, boys. Going from a car to a boat. Let's go for a fish now, though, eh? Let's do it. What's the best outboard trim position for uh, like landing and, and launching? Yeah, good question. When you're coming into land, a lot of novice drivers will come in and they'll uh, be very, very, very concerned about their outboard. But rather be concerned about your outboard on the skeg on the bottom of your outboard, be more concerned about where you're going. So always keep your eyes forward. And adjust your trim to about 50 to 70. And if it's at 50 to 70 degrees up, you can be pretty sure your skeg won't scrape on the ground. Now that means you can keep your eyes forward and if there's a kid in front of you or someone playing on the beach, you'll know it. If you're always looking backwards, adjusting your trim with your eyes, you don't know what's in front of you. Let's head back into shore. Start the outboard. Now when we start off as novices, we get the wheels down as soon as possible. As you, as you get better and better, you'll be able to lower the wheels the closer to the land. But for right now, I'm going to do it as early as possible. Get my bow wheel down. One of the things you can do is you can drive sea legs along with the wheels in the water. So I've got all the wheels down now underneath the boat so I can approach the beach. Now if you know your own beach and the obstacles at your beach, you'll feel safe. But if you don't know the beach you're headed to, go very slowly and take your time. And now what I'm doing is there's a 200 horsepower motor behind me. I'll use that power to drive me into shore. And I'll drive 
use that power all the way up until we hear the roar of the outboard and then let the 20 horsepower just drive us the last way of the last little bit up the beach. Alright, you feel my front wheels? Got my wheels turning. I've still got my outboard in because my prop's in the water. Start to hear my prop turning and I switch my prop off. Now it's just the inboard taking us the rest of the way up. And once we get to our destination, pull the joystick back to the neutral position where it's hydrostatically braked. And because we're going to get off here, I'll drop my bow wheel to make sure I can't roll back or do any damage. Once the bow wheel's all the way up, the keel of the boat's stuck in the sand, your boat's going to go nowhere. Switch your boat off and go home. Special things we need to know about washing this little beauty down. Not really. It's just like it's the easiest boat to get in and out of the water, it's probably the easiest boat to wash down. You drive it to where you're going to leave it and store it for the evening, just wash it down with fresh water. Don't use any alcohol or sovereign based uh, uh, washers and leave it where you want to leave it. It's got two motors, three wheels. So how do you service the needs? Good news is you don't have to worry about that. All you need to do is refer to your service schedule. So when you buy your first sea leg boat, you'll get a service schedule. And there's three things in it, an A service, a B service and a C service, which are done at three months, 12 months, 24 months, 36 months. So it's very important that you log with your dealer or uh, sea leg site. Now uh, the other manufacturer's items are the outboard and the electronics. You need to refer to the manufacturer's operation manuals on those items. Just another question on parking. How should we leave this baby? Now again, a very easy boat to leave behind. A lot of people park these boats in constrained spaces. A small garage or a small area next to their house, in which case they need to lower the boat down to actually get it into the garage. That's fine. You can leave the boat in any position from up to down to squat it into the garage. I suggest if you're leaving it outside, you put an oil cover on it to cover it up. If you're leaving it in a garage, make sure you always chop the wheel so you don't get any rollback. Yeah. The most important thing to do when you leave it alone is to get the electronics covered up at night time. But other than that, it's safe and secure. And uh, leave it for your next happy boating outing. But hold on, it's a car. It's a boat. And you're telling me it's this simple? It's that simple. Phone now, 0800 <laughs> Series. <laughs> Yeah.